Hello my Taco Buddies, today I'm going to review Tokyo Ghoul Route 8 Episode 2. Let me just say it was not as action-packed as Episode 1, but it was just as enjoyable, maybe even more to some viewers. Also, this episode starts off by showing a flashback, showing the investigators get their asses handed to them by the dozen, by the original Al, the one in the past. It's much less merciful. He's merciless. He's just killing people. He doesn't leave any survivors. But out of the sky, out of the shadows, out of the mist, out of nowhere comes this investigator called Arma. You can tell he's just a badass with the glasses. Just, hey, let me fix my glasses. And he goes head to head with the fucking owl and lives to tell the tale. You can clearly know that he survives because the investigators have a special investigators meeting and they're all like, hey, where's investigator Arma? I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong, people. But anyway... You can tell that the investigators are planning something huge. I believe that they're trying to kill any fucking ghoul and every fucking ghoul. But we are introduced to new investigators as well. And I like that shit that they're actually introducing us to new characters. And I just enjoy when they show us new characters because these characters have endless possibilities. That's what I like about character introduction. Also... I love how they wrote Nishiki in this episode. Nishiki stepped up to the plate to be the one that tries to spend time with Hanami due to the fact that Kaneki's gone. We all know that Kaneki's the one that spent time with her. You know, when he was all the whole pussy Kaneki with the black hair all, I'm gonna spend time with you. I'm a male, but I think I have a period. But anyway, I love how they're making Nishiki character more likable. They're making him more likable to the viewer, more enjoyable on the screen, and he's just more down to earth. We all know that that tough guy shit is getting played out, people. The whole I'm, I'm silent and deadly is getting old. And I love how they noticed that shit and made him more enjoyable in this episode. Also, the two investigators in the elevator, they come to a conclusion that the owl that they fought recently in episode one is a fake due to the fact that they actually lived to tell the tale. They actually weren't that injured. And they actually came out pretty okay after that fight. They say, hey... You remember the owl in the past, man. He was fucking big as shit. He was merciless. He he wounded people. He killed people. He did not like survivors. Pretty much when they fought this guy in the past, they were all game over, man. Game fucking over. But when they fought him in the in episode one, they're all like, hey, we were whooping this nigga ass. And they come to the conclusion, hey, we aren't going to tell these people that this was actually the... um. That this was a fake owl. Let's keep this shit under wraps. And, whoa. Just saying, hey, if you would have told the people that it was a fake, they maybe would have fought better or they maybe would have gotten scared on the battlefield. Hey, could have played one of two ways. But with that being said, Eamon, Amon, I believe his name is pronounced, meets his new partner, which is Mr. Mado's daughter. Also, Akira is disliked by Sato because she was always first in her class. And... While they're talking, you can clearly see that Sato just looking like, hey, I don't like this bitch, man. What the fuck I need pockets for? This bitch took everything. And she, he just dislikes this bitch with a passion. Also, Suzo, I believe, with the stitches, he dislikes him as well. He just, Sato's just looking like that guy that thinks he's better than everyone. Just looking like that guy that thinks his shit doesn't stink. And he's clearly going to be one of those characters that is disliked throughout this series. And all while they're talking, Akira, you can tell... This shit is actually, and even in real life, people, when a female actually talks to you, she knows she's smarter than you, and she actually displays that shit. She challenges you on the low, making this guy look like a complete jackass in the public because he's the only one that realized he's being challenged by Akira. So she challenges his intellect to saying, hey, that's wrong. Your shit is wrong. I'm right in this situation. And for some reason, I like that about her character. She's just a smart-ass know-it-all. And that may be her downfall in this series. Who's to know? Also, Ito takes off her bandages, revealing her face, and says Kaneki name. And if you didn't know by now, spoiler alert, I'm going to give you five seconds to mute this video. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ito is actually the real owl, people. She is the owl that's in the um past that's whooping ass. Also, we are showed the black and all white dressed ghouls. 
They one have on all black and one have on all white. They have one eye just like Kaneki and it is also a spoiler alert. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. If you didn't want to know this, turn this video off now. But they are also like Kaneki. They are man-made ghouls by the doctor. He had his head not shown in episode one. So if you want to check all those spoilers that I did at the end of that video, check that video out as well. And wow. At the end of this episode, major shit was going down because it looked like the ghouls were actually going to attack the humans. And I'm all like, ah. I love this episode, man, because it, it left us on the verge of saying, hey, I cannot wait for fucking episode three. I'm like, wow. But with that being said, you guys, this is my review of Tokyo Ghoul Route A Episode 2. If you like this video and if you want to see the actual spoilers that cover this entire season, the entire season of Episode 2, I did a spoiler video at the end of Episode 1. So check out the Episode 1 review if you want to know a lot of spoilers that's going to happen. So with that being said, you guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share the video. With that being said, this is Herman Frost. It's a Taco Weekly over and out. Love you guys for actually viewing and subscribing.